Hi, I'm Beth Hayes, Editor-in-Chief of McCall's Quilting. Today I'd like to show you how to make continuous bias. As quilters, we generally make bias to bind our quilts, but bias actually can be used for other things in the home deck field, uh, even apparel. But today we're thinking about making bias for our quilt edge. So let's get started. Here I have a square of fabric, and it must be square. Size isn't even that important for the purpose of this demonstration. A smaller square, you get less bias, obviously, a larger square more. Please make sure it's square. I've made a mistake myself. Uh, let's pretend this is 20 inch and 21 that inch, or that direction. It won't work. It has to be square. First things first, take a permanent marker and just mark a little one on this seam, one on this side. Then we're going to go up here, mark a little two. This is just marking your seam. Seam one, seam two. Do that in the seam line. You can use a pencil, permanent marker, whatever you prefer. I'm a big permanent marker fan. Fine point, that is. And now I'm going to reach over here and get my rotary cutter. And the goal is to cut exactly from this corner to this corner. If you're not comfortable butting up a couple rulers, like I do, because I guess I, I like to cheat and do everything fast, you could take a yardstick, draw a line, and then cut with your scissors. But I'm just going to butt up a couple of rulers because one isn't long enough to reach the whole way. And take a cut from corner to corner. And pull, then part, get the rulers out of the way. Now you're going to find out why we numbered each seam. First, we're going to stitch the number one seams together, right sides together. So one side down. And as soon as you start picking these up, you can see it would be, notice, it would be very easy to get it mixed up. That's why having this little key, number one here, number one here, is very helpful. Right sides together, we're going to pin this. And as, uh, as is always the case, when you have triangles, you're going to have a little dog ear on each side. Just offset them so they're evenly positioned. I think you can see what I'm doing. Now, we're going to pin this and then go to the machine and sew the first seam. This is also straight of grain, so you don't have to worry. You're not sewing a bias seam here. So I'll just add maybe three, four, five pins, just enough to keep it secure. And these little corners, nice and nice and even. Now for the purpose of this video, let's pretend I've gone to the machine, I've stitched this seam, and voila, here is the, this, these were our number one seams, came back, pressed it open, press open, very important, that's one of the keys. Now you are already seeing what I have done in preparation for you. I have actually drawn the lines which are going to be the width of our bias. But I'm going to demonstrate to you again with a ruler how you are going to draw your lines to get the width of bias that is your choice. You could have two, two inch, two and a half inch, two and a quarter inch happens to be my favorite width for double fold binding. So to draw this line again, you'll need your six by 24 rotary ruler and using this straight edge on your fabric, 
I'm going to bring it here and align it right to the two and a quarter line. Again, with my fine point permanent marker, I'm going to draw. I'll have to shift this down. And you can, you can see now, the bigger your square, the more shifting you need to do with your ruler. Finish drawing the line. Now, all the way across this parallelogram, that's the shape we have right now, bring the ruler up and align that two and a quarter, because you're making two and a quarter inch bias, along that line that I, you've just drawn. Again, and just march on up your piece of fabric. Now, when you get up to the top, you're probably almost assuredly going to have some leftover fabric. Uh, that will get tossed away. And that there's a little, a very little bit of waste of fabric when you make your uh, continuous bias, but it's, it's nominal. So now we, I have several strips of continuous bias marked here. And the next step is what is sometimes confusing to people. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're bringing our seam two together. See, this is side two, and this is side two. Now you can see why it really was important to put the little numbers in place. Now when we bring these together, see how wonderful, I hope you can see my lines, I didn't make them too dark, but they match up um, very nicely. Well, don't get excited and sew on those lines or you won't end up with a continuous strip. I've done that too when you get too quick and careless and rushing. What you, the key here, and this is the little bit tricky part, you're going to offset the strip by one. Did you see what I did? Here it was lined up exact. Now I'm going to bring this strip, these down one position and pin this seam and sew it. This is what becomes a little bit awkward. And to help, now I'm bringing my pins over, to help with your positioning, you can, let's see, I needed a pencil up here. I'll use my permanent marker. Make just the little hash mark, um, where you're going to put a pin right in a quarter a quarter inch because on each side of that position. So that can be a pin placement. Here a pin where I made the little hash mark. Right sides together, bring the pin up here. So that will assure when the seam is sewn that your lines are going to match exactly. Now, the reason I wanted you to see me do this is so that you could get an idea of the bit of awkward, awkward feeling you, you get here with this seam. And here is our offset, just kind of hanging out there, blowing in the wind. And now, we have to pin this entire seam. And I'll put, I will put a couple more pins than I might normally, just because it does not lay real smoothly right now. And so a few extra pins definitely keep your, your raw edges nice and even under the presser foot as you're finishing this seam. Again, this is going to be a quarter inch seam. I'm finishing my pressing. Notice here we have just the tail hanging. Don't worry, it looks wrong, feels wrong, but it isn't. It's right. Now it's time to go to the machine and stitch this seam number two. Now we're going to stitch this quarter inch seam. 
as you can see, the, the fabric, it just looks like kind of a jumble. So be, be concerned about working to keep your raw edges even. That's why you put a few extra pins in here. Okay, here we go, stitching our quarter inch seam. Don't stitch over your pins. I know we all do it sometimes, but it's not good policy. Okay, here we come. And as you move, as you move along the seam, just because this is a somewhat of an awkward situation, you know, readjust. Here we go. Coming to a pin. And it's and now we need a needle down because I want to readjust it one more time so that it's flowing very smoothly under the presser foot. Okay, we're almost finished. Last, and I actually had to use my finger to get those raw edges even. This isn't hard at all. You just want to take a little bit of care to make sure it doesn't skew. Okay, here we come down to the end and Pull her out, and now I'm going to show you how to cut your bias. Now it's time to press this new number two seam that we just took. I'm just going to fold this fabric out after that kind of jumbly mess we had. Notice all of a sudden it lays flat. And what we'll need to do is go to the ironing board Press this open just like we pressed open the first seam we did. Now I have another example here, all done up, already pressed, to illustrate what this looks like in the end. See, we have our marked lines, both seams pressed open, kind of a crisscrossy looking thing, and now we're ready to cut our continuous bias. You're going to love this. It's this whole this whole project is a little bit like a puzzle and I always have kind of uh, fun making it. So here we are cutting scissors. I don't use a rotary for this. I use a hand scissors and just follow follow the line and here, I should put my hand inside here to give myself a little more support so that you can see it better in the camera. Okay, just cut around and around and around. Following, following those drawn lines, you'll have to, you'll have to move your fabric continuously as you go around. This takes a couple minutes actually, but it's fun. Now I'd like to tell you why it is that you may want to try to use continuous bias binding on the, your next quilt project. I wouldn't think, I don't think it's particularly important on a wall quilt or a display quilt, but let me tell you, bias binding is much, much stronger than straight of grain. So a quilt that will get a lot of use, um, a bed quilt or a quilt that's going to be loved a lot, will really benefit from bias binding. It's much, much stronger. I have vintage quilts at home, and believe it or not, those that were bound with bias are the bias binding is still there as, as the little patchwork is starting to fray away. It's pretty miraculous. And also, to be honest, I find that a bias binding also lays a little bit, um, just it lays a little bit nicer, um, especially on a bed quilt coming over the edge of a bed. So now you can imagine I have cut apart I've gone round, round, and round. And look, I've only taken two rows so far, and look how much I have. The last step, which we will do, is 
go to the ironing board, fold our raw edges together, and press. I won't show you that pressing, it's pretty obvious. However, I do want to show you the benefit of these seams that have been pressed open. When you, when you uh, bring your raw edges together and press, notice everything is offset, so you don't get, you don't get you know, chunks or nubs of um, a lot of fabric in there. It all lays quite nice and flat. Well, I hope on your next quilt you might try to use a bias binding made with this continuous bias technique.